Hey, welcome to Creative for More, the podcast. Over here, our conversations are centered around birthing the more that exists within you. We help you mine your originality, live more resiliently, and leverage all of your experiences so that you can serve the world as the highest expression of yourself. My guests will challenge your thinking and give you practical insights for being more, doing more, and having more. My name is Tom Bramuswagu, and I am your host. Let's get started. Hello and welcome. Welcome to Creative for More, the podcast. We're currently at episode 101. And I say that with a lot of pride, actually. I'm like, yes, well done. So when I was thinking today, like, okay, so what am I going to share on the podcast? What would be a good follow-on, especially after the epic episode we had last week with Fela Durotoye? I hope you've listened to it surely you are not one of those people who will not recognize value who will not run after value or chase after value and make sure that you make good use of it especially when it's free right but if you haven't you want to make sure you listen to it if you have you want to let me know how you found it because i thought it was just a sensation sensational conversation let me know how you found it and then also have you shared it with someone make sure you share it with as many people as possible it's also on youtube so you want to go catch it there as well because the video experience is completely entirely different okay so i was thinking what would be a good follow-on right and i thought you know what it'll be useful to have a conversation on just what i've learned like i had my um, the 100 episode last um, week and i'm thinking like i have done this consistently for 100 weeks back to back no days off what have i learned in the process what has being a podcaster for 100 weeks taught me so i thought okay you know what i will come to you with a list of my lessons and i have 12 and the truth is that i could have gone on and on i could have gone longer but i had to you know rein it in at some point but the, the, i just thought you know this has been such a life-changing experience with so many lessons interwoven within it that would be a blessing to as many as um listen to it so i i just wanted to go on and on but i said you know what let's 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 keep it nice and concise at 12 so i will be sharing discussing running through 12 epic lessons that i learned from podcasting i've learned so far so i'll be running through 12 epic lessons that i've learned so far from podcasting for 100 weeks okay so lesson number one consistency can be cultivated if you've ever thought that people who are consistent were born that way i want you to scratch that out of your mind there is no single person under the earth that was born with consistency genes yes some people are a little bit more disciplined than others but it is because they have built those muscles yes it is a muscle that you build it's a skill that you learn and after you do it and you do it and you understand the pillars that hold up discipline and consistency you also can do it there's so many books out there that teach you about how to be a bit more consistent how to build good habits and um, the one that comes to mind is atomic habits you want to make sure i'm just, just looking at my bookshelf to see if i'll find it you want to make sure you check it out honestly it has it's such a good book and it has so 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 many you know helpful tips and practices that can help you become consistent i am the person who always used to look at other people who are doing consistent things and thinking oh my gosh these guys are just so you know different from me they are trailblazers i can never be like that but look at me now podcasting consistently for 11 um, for 100 weeks so what that tells me is that i can do it you can do it also okay so i want you rather than you know looking at people and and just um, admiring them and thinking that they are far off. So instead, be asking the good questions, which are, you know, what do they, what are they doing that I don't know? And what could I be doing? How can I get better? You know, if you ask sort of empowering questions, you start to get 
better answer. So don't ask these empowering questions, ask empowering questions. And some of the things I'm going to be teaching today on the podcast, I'm going to be sharing rather on the podcast today, will help you. They will help you. There are some of the pillars that have helped me stay consistent. And I know that it will be a blessing to you as well. Number two is, hmm, what you know is enough to get you started. Again, I always felt like, you know what? People know something that I don't know, and that is why they have other the results that I don't have. You know, I always just felt like, you know what, before you get anything started, you have to do, you know, there, there are just so many hoops that you must run through and you have to be this and you have to be that. But that is not the truth. I am telling you, as a matter of fact, that what you know is enough to get started. As you as you move, clarity comes. So clarity comes with movement, and movement brings momentum. You can't get momentum unless you are moving. You know that that phrase that says a rolling stone gathers um, no moss. What that means in essence is that as the stone is moving, it gathers so much momentum that it doesn't there's no time for it to stay still for moss to be gathering so you want to ensure that you don't get stuck in that cycle of i want to do something but i don't know where to start so you don't then start anything and then you're beating yourself up for not making momentum you want to make sure that you get in you get in the ring because as you get into the arena you will start to figure things out as you start to get into the arena you start to figure things out you don't need all those massive um, c- certifications and all of this. Everything is useful. I, I'm t- and hear me out when I say this. All of that will be, might be, maybe, you know, possibly will be useful, but it may not be useful in the beginning because sometimes what you need to do is to get started. And as you get started, it will become apparent. The clarity that you get will even help you narrow down more into the exact things that are useful for you. So look at this now, for instance, you decide that I want to do this um, and I want to go and learn um, a particular skill, it, it will take maybe about six months. You go, you go and learn that skill. And then as you now start, you start it and you start going in and then you realize that mm, maybe this is not really for me. You would have wasted that time that you invested in learning the skill. People say nothing is really wasted, it will help you in another, but you want to be a bit more strategic. And by that, what I mean is get into the arena, get into the arena, get into the ring, get your hands dirty. And as you start to feel your way through, it will be more apparent the exact thing that you need to get where you want to go to so don't look stand outside looking get in as you get started you'll get you will know what you know is is enough it's more than enough to get you started okay number three i love number three so much and number three is your genius it needs to be courted ah Ah, if you don't want to see your genius, it doesn't show up. Now, genius is like this fine, um, this fine, lovely chick or lovely lady or lovely guy that you know you 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 want to you want to get to know a little bit more. But guess what? It doesn't happen if you keep yourself cooked up at home on that, you know doors closed windows closed you don't go out you don't do all of that no if you want to get to know your genius if you want to experience your genius you have to come out you have to you have to show up you have to be present and before your genius starts to come out and that that was exactly my experience i went like you know when i started podcasting right half the things that i've spoken about since i've been a podcaster i didn't know but the more I placed a demand on more from myself, the more and more started to, started to come out. I was at a conference over the weekend and I was hearing, um, I heard a, a, one of the speakers and she spoke, she said about in the pressing comes the gushing of oil. And I love, I love that so much. 
because people feel like, oh my God, if I put myself under pressure, oh my God, I will just cave. No, as you put on yourself under pressure, let me tell you something, you start to build the muscles for quick response. Everything that was inside of you that you weren't really sure about, it actually starts to come to the surface. So you've got to put yourself under that, you know, some people call it creative um creative pressure where you go and you say you know what this is what i'm going to do by this date you announce it and because of that you have you're under pressure so you have to do it and that is how your genius is your genius is that that is like that oil that is hidden that only comes out when you are you know when there is pressure when there's something you know that is put on you your genius needs to be courted it wants to be wanted yeah so there is more that lies within you but you don't know it because you're not you're not Supporting your genius. You're not saying, hey, what else is underneath this hood? What else is what else is, is in here? I can tell you for free, there is so, 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 so much more in all of us. Look at me. I didn't even know that I had it in me. When I first started, when I first started, um, you know, when I first had, um, I had the idea to be a podcaster, I didn't even know that I could, you know, I could do it. I just said, you know what, I'll just try. And the more I did it, the more I did it, the more that oil flowed. Most times, sometimes when I'm doing solo episodes, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'll tell you the truth. Even, t- even like yesterday, I wasn't really sure about what I was going to speak about today. Even up until when I started preparing for that, that was when I knew I wanted to talk about, you know, the lessons I learned, but I didn't, I didn't have it, you know, thought out and articulated, you know, the way I'm saying it. But I went in and I said, you know what? I started to reflect. You see that process of reflection, that is me pulling out my genius. That's me saying, hey, come out. What do you think about this? Come out, let's dance, let's play, right? So you need to give yourself room for your genius to come out. You need to court it. You need to put yourself under pressure. You need to say, yes, it's okay for you to come out. What do you think about this? Give yourself moments of reflection. Okay. I could go on and on about that one, but I'll move on. Number four, number four. I love number four. Number four is systems make work easier. So it's a set of processes that work harmoniously for a determined outcome. I just made that up, but it is right. (laughs) So for me, as a podcaster, what I've learned is that when you have a system, when you have a team of people, when you have a way of doing things, then it makes the work easier. Like before I was even... um, um going to record today um my my team's already reached out to me hey this is the day that we usually would get the recording what's going on that's a system that's a system there are people who put that pressure on me to say look you you've not done what you need to do hey leader you've not done what you need to do come on get off from behind from off your backside and go and do it so that you know we can continue so that you know itself makes the work easier so i'm not the one pulling all the time the system pulls me the system pulls me the people who work i have it i have a phenomenal team by the way i have a phenomenal team that i work with in order to do what i do i am particularly where this podcast is concerned and guys i know you're listening hey hey thank you so much i have the best 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 team and what they do for me is ensure that everything that we have said collectively that we will do we hold We live up to that standard. So they make the work easier. Everyone has responsibilities. Everyone has, you know, what they're meant to be doing and everyone holds up their own. And collectively, we get a predetermined outcome. So if you've ever tried to do something, right? And you were on your own by yourself, you know, and I'm not saying the team is the only system. You can have technological um, technology systems as well. So you're on your own. You have no systems. You have no processes. Um, no, nothing, right? No one knows you're doing this thing. Even accountability is a form of a system, right? No one knows 
that you are doing this and there's no accountability in any way or shape or form the chances of you not doing that thing are skyrocket high because there's no system but when you have a system the work is easier okay so that's one big thing i've learned from doing this podcast like once it was it was much more difficult when i first started but as i started to build a team i started to put systems and processes in it's become a lot more um, a lot more easier the work kind of just takes care of itself right number five number five guys there is gold all around you yes i want you to just where you are now i want you to just close your eyes and look around just well you can't really look around if your eyes are shut but just envision as your eyes are shut and and envision gold all around you envision gold all around you and i want you to open your eyes look there is gold everywhere around you there is gold in people there is gold in things there is gold in your ideas in yourself there is gold everywhere around you ha this one hmm. i've just realized like when i first started i would never even thought that some of the you know some of the kind of conversations I would have had on the podcast, I've had on the podcast so far that I would have had them. And I've just been amazed. Person after person coming up, sharing. They'll say, hey, this is what I did. They'll share their life stories. And every time I'm just amazed. I'm just like, ha, huh, people are more vast than is apparent. Because people come with with all of themselves they come with their experiences they come with their ambitions they come with everything so when they come and we have conversations i'm hearing i'm hearing i'm hearing from them i'm hearing from from their their parents i'm hearing everything that they know i'm hearing so people carry gold when i come and i start to speak I'm like, hey, how did you know that? You just heard me now when I just, just made a defin up a definition for systems. There is gold on the inside of you. I want you to know that there is gold on the inside of you. You are vast. You are vast. You are like a triple carriageway that is moving like you have so much more you just need to press ah you just need to put your foot down on the gas and you will go i'm telling you people are vast so whenever you're in conversations with people honor their vastness expect the more that is on the inside of them court it so that it can come and be a blessing to you expect the more that is inside expect the more that is inside of yourself as well people are vast you think you have nothing but i tell you in your network you in your network you have people if we wanted to really sit down and check it the answers to your problem are in the people that you know they are in the people that you know I think it's, it's um, is it seven degrees of separation or it might be eight, then ten degrees, I'm not really sure. It says that we are only, is it seven or ten people from anybody that we want to know? This person that you know knows this other person and knows that other person and knows that other person and before you know, you know whoever you want to know. So I want you to, you know, that visualization that I gave um, when I started this point, I want you to really take it to heart. Imagine the next person you see, there's gold in them. In the things around you, there is gold. Expect the gold from things so that it can be a blessing to you. Number six. I love number six. And number six is you can create your table. 
hey let's just even shatter this table right now you can create your table enough of waiting for people to create tables and invite you to it you can create your own table hear me and hear it clearly eh? when you create your table people will come and dine with you if you're like oh gosh like how will i do this thing you know Will I be by myself? Will I that? No, people are looking for tables that have been set. That's just human nature. People want to eat and they're looking for tables that have been set. Right? So when you create your own table, people will come and they will dine with you. Hey, everyone, like, let me tell you something. There is no single person that I have invited to the show that has said, you know what, I am not interested in doing coming onto your podcast. This singular um, statement is probably the most, it's probably the thing that has, that has shocked me the most. That I, that there are way more people looking to collaborate with me than I realized. No matter how high and mighty the people have been, I've just said the same thing to everybody. I would love to have you on my podcast. Come, what do you think? And everyone says, yes, it will be great. I would love to be on your podcast. And guess what? People have even surprised me, the more, um, surprised me more. Oh, I've known about you. I've seen you around. People are like, you know me? Like, oh my God, I revere you. How do you... So yeah, I've, I've seen you. I've seen you around and I've just, oh, you know, I've always wanted to be on your podcast. What? You? Always wanted to be on my podcast? What? I am telling you, when you create your table, people will come and dine with you from afar. People are looking for, you know, that uh, you prepare at the table before me, before my enemies. Well, it's not enemies in this case, but people want, people want to see a set table. They want to see the forks laid out, the spoon, the everything. And all they need to do is just come and fist with you. So what can you create? What table can you create? I want you to think from that perspective. I'm not just waiting. I don't know what to do in my life. I don't really know. I don't really know. Create your own table. Whatever it is that you're interested in, think about how you can be a leader in that thing and invite people to it. Enough, enough of just wanting and, be, and being at the mercy of other people. If they don't, if they don't invite me, if they don't tell, tell, tell me to speak at their conference, if they don't, they, create your own. This year, I did my very first um, summit, the Creator for More Summit, and I was shocked again. One, as how many people registered for it? How many people, you know, turned out? How many people, you know, are invited to be speakers? And, and everyone said yes. Same thing. Nobody said, look, I, I don't want to be a speaker at your summit. Nobody said that. What I mean is that when you create your table, you will be surprised. The reason why you're not having the collaborations and the interactions is that you this there's, there's no table. So if I want to link with you, well, how are we doing this linkage? Yeah, so create your table. And it follows on, the seventh one follows on really, really nicely. Number seven is people are watching. Hey, people are watching. Like I was just saying, the amount of people who say like, I've been seeing you, I've been seeing you around. I'm like, how do you even know me? There are more people watching you that will, than will ever engage with you. They're just watching. I was having some conversations with people who are in my inner circle and I was just speaking to them. I was asking them also, oh, when did you um, learn about me? Like how, where? It's like, oh, I've been following your podcast for the past how many um, months? Um, up since last year, for almost a year. And I was like, what? I don't even know the people who live as far as, you know, really, really like places that I wouldn't even think that people know who I am. People are watching. I'll tell you something. I invited a guest once on the podcast and she said something that really surprised me. She said to me, 
She said, Tomba, I just love what you do. I've been watching you for a while. And what I like about you is um, your consistency. I said, well, first of all, I don't even know you. What? You look at me up to my consistency. People are watching. Just you do your own thing. People are watching. And when you create, they will come. Come and dine with you. Yeah? Number eight. Hmm. My number eight lesson is trust in the unknown. Trust in the unknown. We have this um, control tendencies. We want to know the outcome. We want to be able to define it. We want to be able to articulate it into a science. If we don't know exactly how, you know, one plus one will make two, then we don't want to do it. Ah, let me tell you this, and I hope this delivers you. Unless you step out of the boat, you will never know that you can walk on water. You must step off the boat before you experience the miracles that are waiting for you to experience them. Unless I, if I did not start, I could have been talking about this thing until I'm blue in my face. If I did not put myself out there and say, you know what, I'm going to start. I, I would never have had any of the successes I have been talking to you about today. I would never have known that I could build systems. I would never have known that, you know, I could be a visionary leader and I could get a team to work with me on this particular thing. I would never know that I could, I, my consistency could be cultivated. I would never know that what I had was enough. I would never know there was genius on the inside of me. I would never know that I could collaborate with so many people across the world. Think about it. What is unknown in, in, what is possible for you that you haven't yet realized? What are the unknowns that are just waiting for you to have enough boldness to step into them? Where is that water that is just waiting for you to step off the boat and into it so that you can, sh you can prove, you can show the world the brilliance that you carry. Trust in the unknown. Don't always wait until every single thing adds up. I was saying to, um, you know, my, my inner circle, I was teaching them and I was saying to them, look, they said, oh, when should I, when should I, when, when do I start, you know, how about if you don't feel completely ready, you know, and you always, you, you, you're, you're not really sure, you want to do something, you don't feel completely ready, how do you know um, when's the right time? I said, look, let me tell you this. If you start when you are ready, you are too late. Whatever you are doing and you're committing to doing, there must be a, a stretching. There must be, you know, there must be an allowance for expansion in and of that thing. So you grow into that position, right? When you are just at the, 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 at the top edge of it, then you're too late. There's no, there's no room for you to expand. There's no room for you to grow. So you must then be thinking about the next thing. So whenever you feel ready, like, oh, I've had this certification. I have had this. I have all these people that are ready to engage now. I've got this confirmation for me. I am ready to start. You are too late. And I say that unequivocally. You are too late. Start. Run with the wind and you will expand as you go along. Trust in the unknown. And that is how you, 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 you build your capacity. That is how you grow exponentially. 
because you are learning as you're doing and you're growing and you're just running you're running you're running you're running i'm telling you because you're giving space you're giving margin for your genius to really show up that is where the crushing happens that is where that oil comes out that unknown that that land of the unknown i'll leave this one but this is 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 it I, I, this this if this is speaking to you just step out just step off the boat that's all i ask the next one is you can chart a new course at any time Whoosh. i love this one Whoosh. love it you can chart a new course at any time if anybody ever said to you that oh when you start that is it you have to be there forever no you are the architect of your own destiny so you start you can always change course this is the thing that holds a lot of people back. I want to make sure that this thing is the thing that I will do because mm -mm, mm -mm, stop. Do appraise. Change trajectory. Do appraise. Change trajectory. Do appraise. Change trajectory. That's what I've done. For those of you who have followed me for a while, you know that this podcast was called the Unscathed Life Podcast. And I said, you know what? It was great. But I, I just said, after about we turned one, episode 52, I said, look, I, I don't think this is right. I, I I think I want a new name. Nobody's coming from anywhere to say, Tomba, but why? You should be on skate forever until you die. No. But it's fine. What Unscathed Life gave me was just that platform to shut out. And it's okay. You can change. I don't like this name anymore. You change. I don't want to do this this way anymore. Hey, you change. So don't feel, you know, burdened by this desire for perfection. Like it has to be this and it's fixed forever. Don't, don't feel like that. Because this is one thing that holds and limits people a lot. I really want to do this, but, you know, I want to make sure it's the thing before I start. No. You can chart a new course. If you don't like it, you can change it at any time. And then number 10 is, do you <laughs> let others adjust? Do you and let others adjust? Look, a lot of times we feel, oh my goodness, I, does this matter? Like, uh, how would people see this? How would people be judging? No, don't worry. Start where you start and do what you can do. Let others adjust. Don't try and retrofit yourself to make sure it works out with everybody. You cannot please everybody in the world. Yeah? And... The flip side of that as well is, you know, people will say, you know what, I don't, I don't, I don't really know if this is good enough. We did it, did it, all these things. It's just like, no, just, I don't, I, I don't know if it is, but I'm just going to start it. As I start, other people will adjust. They will say, okay, this is my style for the time being. And you can change it. And that was, the, that was me when I first started. And I've said this a lot on the podcast. When I first started the podcast, if you remember, I was like, I used to, you see this, what I'm doing now on a solo episode and I'm speaking and I'm just going on and on. I, they, I could never, hey, I never have done this before. Like I would script every single word and read it out. Go to my episodes. I think it's episode I had one episode on resilience and courage. All those ones that resilience, courage, authenticity. Those, if you go and look, that's it. I was reading from a book, like not from a book. Like I, I would write down what I mean is that I would strip down every single thing I would say on the podcast. Hey, welcome to the. Literally, that's how I started. Now I can speak extemporaneously, but that wasn't the case for me before. But I did me. The people that wanted to listen listened. The people, that, <laughs> the 
people would have felt like, man, this is too monotonous. Her voice is too flat for me. Then they, yeah. It doesn't matter like you think it does. That's one thing I want you to know. Human beings, we, we maximize. We, I think it's majoring on the minors and minoring on the majors sometimes. We major too much on the minors. And there's a tendency for us to also ca catastrophize. So we're constantly thinking, oh my gosh, people are looking at my accent. Hey, well, am I saying it well? Am I doing it? Oh, but the, the, she shows, the, the way she does her own is better than my own. Mm -mm. Don't compare your A to somebody's Z. If you're comparing, compare to where the person started from. If you must compare. But a lot of times people will want to compare. Oh, but look at it. No, that's not apples for apples. Like for like starts people will adjust you will find your people i should have added this actually as a point you will find your tribe the people who need to hear exactly what you're giving the way you're giving it you'll find it so i do my thing and now people message me saying look i just love how you're on the podcast i love how you speak i love it i just do my thing when i'm ready to elevate i elevate when i'm the, i'm just i'm in my own lane I do me and every other person adjust. Yeah? Number 11. With practice, everything gets better. And like I've just spoken, I said it's, it's the, the principle. What you must know is that the more you do anything, the better you become. The more, that's, that's, the, that's mastery. Mastery is being able to do a thing without um, the use of conscious resources. So I can do this without even thinking. That's mastery. I'm telling you, before, when I had to record a solo episode, just myself, without a guest, I was start having my, my, I was start having, my tummy would start churning from maybe three, four days before. I'm telling you. I'll be like, oh my gosh, how will I do it? How will I sound? How did I I'll organize? What do I have to say? I'll think, I'll need to write. How do, uh. But mastery means I can just say to myself, ah, this is what I want to speak about tomorrow. Wake up, just put in a few, few bullet points, turn up, and I will speak from my heart. That's mastery. I have mastered the process of being able to, to bring out my genius to the forefront. I have mastered the process. Is this the best? No, it is a process. So that means I will also keep getting better. The level of mastery I have now will, will keep getting better the more I practice, right? So I want you to know that as you practice, you will get better so don't don't indict yourself don't don't judge yourself as uh, you know i'm not good enough because from, from your first try you're not meant to be good enough remember what i said if you start when you're ready you started too late so give yourself room to stretch give yourself room to expand okay and then number 12, number 12. I feel like I could go on and on and on and on, but we've got to wrap it up at some point. Number 12 is being legacy minded always pays. Being legacy minded always pays. You must incorporate legacy in your daily decisions. And that's exactly what I've done on the podcast. I wanted to do something that no, no matter what happens, no matter where I find myself tomorrow, I want to do something that will be that that that, that will still be relevant. Somebody else is going to pick this up, even in, you know, however many years ago, and it will still be life giving. The impact is not time time bound, right? So that's what I've done, and I always say. It pays, it pays to be legacy minded. Legacy is the footprints that you're leaving in the signs of time. You go, but your footprints are there. So I want you to really reflect on your life. What, what, what is time 
going to say about you? What, are, what footprints are you going to leave when you're no longer here? Right? This is my channel for building legacy, one of my channels. There's so many things that you can do. You can write books, you can you can do anything essentially that will that 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 will immortalize your um, um, the, the experience that you have here on earth. Like right? So it always pays to be legacy minded. Think of things that will ensure that people remember you when you're gone okay so it means to end on that morbid note but it is what it is but that's that's one of the lessons that i've learned that it would always pay it would always pay me putting people first thinking and all of that that's a lesson that i've learned that you know it always pays to incorporate legacy in your daily decisions okay guys let me know which of these points hits you the hardest i know that i came for some people especially today let me know which of the points i have listed it hits you the hardest i want to hear from you um and thank you so much please continue to subscribe rate everything the show i love you take care until next time bye share <laughs> thank you for joining me this week on created for more the podcast make sure you visit my website i'm at tombra.com where you can subscribe to the show either via itunes or spotify so that you never miss a show going forward you can also follow me on social media i'm at tombra.moswago and if you love the show please 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 leave a rating on itunes so that we can continue to bring you amazing episodes Thanks for listening and see you next week. Don't forget you were created to be more, to do more and have more. Bye for now.